everyone welcome back to my channel if you guys are new here my name is Lisa and in today's video it's a little bit different because I'm going to be doing a 10 tips and tricks on finding your style I feel like I wanted to do this video for a very long time because I feel like after 28 years of living I think I have kind of figured it out and the keyword is still kind of because I feel like I'm always learning I'm always improving but the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I realized that I have a very good understanding of what I like and don't like and also a very good understanding of my body now so I know how to change my style and adapt my style even when my body changes as well so for example if you gain weight if you lose weight maybe you're going through something like pregnancy you were just pregnant etc I hope that these tips will really help you find your style and love your body and love what you're wearing whilst your body is also changing and you can also find everything that you love with it. So that being said, I'm going to go straight to my first tip. So my very first tip is knowing your body specifically. What do you love and what do you least love about your body? I think this is really important because I feel like everyone has areas of their body that they're a little bit self-conscious about. And I also feel like there's a little bit of a misunderstanding in the whole self love kind of movement right now, because I think that everyone thinks that you must love every part, like love, love, because because I don't know about you, I kind of had that impression until I went to my therapist and I asked him about it and he's like, no, there's a difference between truly loving something and also just really accepting it and also learning how to adapt with it. I actually really like that explanation a little bit better because for example, one of the areas that I struggle to love is my boobs and I've always wanted them a little bit bigger, but I'm not gonna force myself to love something that I just, it was not there. But then he's like, there's also a way to just accept it and learn to like, work with it. So I was like, okay, this is an explanation I can work with. And today in this video, I'm going to tell you how I personally adapted my style to my own body. So the first thing, like I said, understanding what you love and don't love. So I'll give you my personal examples and you can also answer the questions about your own body, starting with the areas that I don't love about my body, because it's always easier to criticize yourself, but we'll end off with what I like. So starting off with what I'm most self-conscious about, if you guys have seen my videos before, this is probably nothing new, but I am a little bit self-conscious about my arms. I feel like the back of my arms just, I don't know. I always feel kind of like whatever about it. The other area is my tummy and my boobs. I feel like these two areas also just make me feel, you know, not the most beautiful sometimes. But the areas that I do love is, you know, maybe like this area, like my collarbone area. I also really like my neck. No area, honestly, is too small. You just write that down because this will help you with the rest of the exercises that this video is gonna give you. Even my legs, I'm like, way more okay with than the rest of my body. So I feel like those are the two, three areas that I can confidently say I don't at least have a problem with. After you know this, I think that it is really good to find clothing that adapts to your likes and dislikes because even if someone comes to you and they're like you're fine like your arm is not big like whatever people say this to me all the time and it's like i don't want to say it's toxic but at the same time it's like okay thank you so much for saying that now i do not feel like my arms are fat anymore like that totally changed my mentality it doesn't actually help because at the end of the day finding your style is about helping you feel confident not what someone else says like yeah that's fine you look great like whatever it's about do you think you look great and feeling that confidence so that will actually help you with everything else like how you walk how you present yourself etc that being said after having a very good understanding of my body i have now chosen clothing that have elevated slash minimized places that i love slash don't love so my personal golden rule okay nobody has said this but I actually discovered this when I was writing this down and I was like wait there's actually a theme here okay so the theme and my golden rule is this if you love that area of your body that part will be tight and if you don't love that area of body that part will be loose so for example because I'm self-conscious about my body clothing that I will wear will always be quite loose around my abdomen you will never see me in like a skin tight like clothing in my abdomen area and even if you do it is probably because I felt skinnier that day but for the most part on an average day you will find a loose item on my tummy even this dress right now look at this this is quite loose this is not like skin tight you know what i mean so the golden rule once again is if you like it will be tight if you don't like it will probably be loose so another example is because i'm very self-conscious about the upper and back part of my arm so one thing that i love wearing this is actually how i discovered this rule is 
puffy sleeves. I absolutely love shirts with puffy sleeves because I think it gives the illusion that, you know, the shoulders are big. So that's why your arm is like way smaller. So finding areas of clothing that really work with your mentality of your body. So another example is I know very well that body suits do not make me feel confident. Why? Because body suits for the most part are super tight all over your body, especially in areas that I don't like. My mentality is that body suits, the purpose of body suits, it's like for the perfect hourglass figure. It's like the Kylie Jenner body. You want the big boobs, you want the small waist. And I feel like I have a big waist and small boobs, which is the exact opposite of what I think body suits are trying to go for. And therefore I hate them. And you will almost never catch me in a bodysuit unless if the bodysuit is loose or whatever, where it's like flaring at top and it just happens to have like the, you know, the attachment at the bottom. But otherwise you will probably not find me in a bodysuit because it doesn't elevate the areas that I like about myself. Okay, so the second tip that I have is being okay with your weight changing. And this is extremely important because I feel like at least for me anyway, my body fluctuates like crazy. For me, when I feel skinny or when I I have lost a little bit of weight. The clothing I feel confident in is different than the clothing I feel confident in when I put on a little bit of weight. When I put on a little bit of weight, I do not wear anything that's tight anything you will see me back with all the loose blouses loose everything but then when i lose weight a little bit and i'm just like wow i look snatched or i've been working out i really want to show off my progress that's when i start wearing a little bit more tight clothing being able to fluctuate your mind and your style along with the way your body changes is really important especially because as women well maybe there are other people watching but especially if you're a girl and you're planning to be pregnant you know when as you're getting pregnant you're putting on a little bit more weight the stuff that will make you feel more confident about yourself is going to be different than when you weren't pregnant or even when you just had your baby the stuff that you're gonna wear then is going to be different than when you were 15 years old and whatever made you feel confident I think it's really important to give yourself that room and fluctuate your style to whatever makes you feel extremely confident about yourself like I said it is okay to buy different items when your body also changes because at the end of the day I feel like people really underestimate this but just genuinely how you dress, it is such a ripple effect into other areas of your life. So for example, when I feel confident, the way I display myself is extremely different. I'm not trying to like hide myself or like be quiet. I want my presence to be a little bit more known, at least more than when I feel terrible about myself or if I am not confident about what I'm wearing. So ultimately your confidence could translate to making more friends, maybe doing better at work or whatever it is. So when your body changes, allow yourself to shop for the items that will really let yourself feel confident because ultimately it is an investment on your energy. I'm sorry, it isn't about materialism. It's really about how you're going to display yourself. If you can tell me that your attitude will not change with a different clothing item, then don't buy it. I feel like that's kind of my theory. So anyway, that is pretty much my second tip. Moving on to my third tip is that items that are in pictures, especially when they're on models or influencers, just because it looks good on them does not mean that it will look good on you. This one really hit me hard because there are so many items that I used to buy when I would be shopping online and I'm like, that looks so great on her. Or maybe I'm like looking at my favorite influencers and I'm like, wait, that looks so good on her. And I buy it and then once I try it on I'm like wait this looks extremely different I think this is where it is very important to once again go back to tip number one which is knowing your body and knowing what you like because a lot of the times the model sizes the influencer sizes are not your size or your body type and it is very incorrect to be shopping for something that is laid out on a different model it's kind of like if you're trying to shop for furniture you're shopping for your own home but the home that you're looking at that has the furniture is either way smaller or way bigger or just way different than the one that you're shopping for. That's kind of how I look at it. So I don't think it's an area that you need to feel bad about yourself. You just need to know that it's a little bit different. And also reversely, what looks good on you might look terrible on that model, on that influencer. So honestly, I don't think it's something that you should feel bad about. It's honestly all about just being different. My fourth tip is knowing what you actually like may be very different and then what you think you will like. Because for example, when I go online, I feel like I really, really want to like, I don't know, an example would be a bodysuit. I remember when bodysuits first came out, I was like, I really think I will like a bodysuit, whatever. It wasn't until I tried a bunch on and I was like, oh my God, 
<laughs> that was so not true. And being able to understand and like sacrifice certain styles, knowing that it's okay and not every trend or whatever, everything you think you're gonna like is going to look good on you and being able to adapt your style to what actually looks good on you. Which actually brings me to my next point, which is about trial and error. Because like I said, it took me so long to make this video because even just last month, I got this dress from Dynamite. It was this green dress, it's beautiful. And it had two little slits on the corner like this. So on the side on my waist and I honestly already didn't think that it was going to be something that wouldn't work on my body. I'm just like, you know what? I'm not that self-conscious about the sides of my waist. It's mostly like the front area. So I got the dress, I tried it on and my fat just kind of like bulged out. It, it didn't look very tight. It looks like it was almost just like donut holes just squeezing out of the two little holes that was just available or whatever. People gasping for air from like a small window. Um, that's literally what it looks like. So I was like, wow, that kind of shocked me because I really thought I was going to love it. And it followed all the theories from number one of why it probably would have worked. But when I actually tried it on, it didn't work out as I thought it would. So being able to, you know, do a trial and error, I think is extremely important. And this trial and error, okay, just as a disclaimer and not to put anyone's hopes up, but um, I don't think it ever ends, honestly, because like I said, this dress incident literally just happened a few weeks ago. I feel like there's always going to be a general understanding. Like now I have a general understanding when I see bodysuits, I don't buy them. At the very end, it's like there's still new items that are constantly coming out. You can still test it out to see if you like it or not, but there is still going to be a lot of learning involved. The best way to learn is through trial and error. So get the item, always make sure there's a return policy and then see if that style is going to look good on you. That being said, for my next point as well, which is quite similar to an earlier point about what you think you'll like and what you'll actually like is about trends. So don't let trends affect you because I feel like, especially for me as my job right now as a content creator online, this one is actually quite hard because there have been so many trends that have come by that I had to resist because I genuinely just don't feel confident in it. But but I almost like felt like I was missing out by not participating in these trends. So for example, this one isn't so much about clothing, the pullback hair trend, you know, the one that's like the clean girl hair where everyone's hair is gelled back. That one I did try and I was like, I absolutely hated the way it looked on me. I feel like it reminded me of back in my cadet days. For me, it's like just understanding that trends, it's okay to pass it by and it's okay to not like it and not be influenced by other people. There's also this one particular type of flip flops that I absolutely do not like. I don't know, it was quite a trend for a while. It's the one where it's like, it's just one line down the middle. And I just think that it doesn't make your feet look extremely flattering. And I decided to pass on it, even with like, I don't know, Crocs coming back. I don't know, there's just a lot of things where trends I've genuinely had to put aside because it didn't align with how I would truly feel about myself if I stepped out in it. And I think that it's very important to understand stand you know, who you truly are instead of trying to accommodate for what's going on in society and also costing your own mental health of what you actually truly like. The next tip that I have is do not fall into the trap of the future you. So for example, for me personally, I used to shop size 24 jeans, even though I was not even a 24 because I genuinely thought I was going to be a 24 because I was like, I'm currently on my diet, so I'm gonna be 24. So the reason why you don't do this is because okay well first it's just a terrible shopping decision because you don't get to wear it right away and you actually have to you know bet on the fact that you're actually gonna lose weight or gain weight or whatever it is which may or may not come and then also because second this one was the one that actually hit me because so I've been like a size 25 26 in jean sizes my entire life. And like I said, one time I bought size 24 jeans in hopes I was at the time on a diet. I was like, I'm going to lose weight to fit into the size 24 jeans. When I actually lost weight, 
I put those jeans on and it still didn't fit. And you know why? It's because I realized it had nothing to do with my fat, my genuine bone structure, okay? I have really big ribs, I don't know why. So even when I was really, really at my fittest moment in my life, I put on those jeans and spoiler, it still did not fit. So I was like, okay, well that was freaking dumb because those jeans were not cheap. So I feel like this is kind of, it's a very dangerous mentality to be in because first of all, it's already very dangerous to constantly be like oh my god lose weight lose weight I mean I'm definitely a victim of that too like I would be lying if I told you I've always been comfortable with my weight that is not true but I think that when it comes to finding your style it is even more important to really just shop for who you are in the moment or just not shop at all because when you do shop for the future you you just don't know if it's ever really gonna come also it perpetuates this really dangerous mentality that you need to be a certain way to love yourself there's been many times and many years ago where I'm like I'm gonna lose weight to this size or whatever and that day just never comes so when it comes to actually you know finding your style my tip is just really loving you for what it is or not loving like I said in the earlier video if you don't love it just really accepting it and if that makes you stop shopping for a little bit it is still better than shopping for a future you okay my next tip is when it comes to finding your style is also keeping your lifestyle in mind and having a very good awareness of who you are so what i mean by this is for example one of the other reasons beyond you know me already being self-conscious of my stomach but even let's just say I was fine with my tummy I feel like this part would be still very important because for example I know that I don't like to wear clothing that is extremely tight because especially when I'm dressed to go out there's always always food and drinks involved or if I'm like sitting on someone's couch so if I'm wearing something super tight I just feel like it doesn't make me feel good about myself when I'm eating when I'm just drinking with friends whatever it is and or even if I feel fine, because I know optically maybe my stomach is sticking out, I just know that I would have to like suck in my stomach the entire night or feel the need to suck in my stomach. I now do not wear anything that would make me even think those things where I'm like, okay, I probably shouldn't eat that much because I'm gonna be uncomfortable afterwards if the pants become extremely tight or whatever. So I feel like now my style is very adaptable to the way I live as well. It's like, if you know that for example, you bike to work, bike home from work. Like you would not want to buy something or wear something that makes your biking journey extremely difficult. So even when it comes to eating and drinking with friends, it's like not finding things that are constantly gonna make you worried about yourself, like looking over your shoulder or whatever, and just understanding whether or not if it's going to be high maintenance for you and if you're able to accommodate. So if you really wanna buy a tight shirt, that's fine. Either you have to be okay with just like, you know, being yourself and like letting loose or whatever, or is it gonna make you have this toxic mentality where you're like, I need to suck in my stomach. And then realistically, are you going to suck in your stomach? You know, at the end of the day, it's like understanding your own lifestyle and what really makes you feel good. Another example that I can give you in this category is also this. If you are someone that absolutely hates wearing thongs, do you really want to be buying clothing where you cannot wear regular underwear? The other aspect is this, right? So either you don't buy clothing that has to make you wear thongs or you genuinely become okay with wearing that piece of clothing and wearing regular underwear and not caring about what you think other people might think or see or whatever it is I think that you know just having a very good understanding of yourself like let's just say if your underwear line shows do you care if you are someone that doesn't care then buy it who cares like honestly it doesn't matter it's about how you feel in the end for me personally, I do care, unfortunately, something I'm still working on through therapy, but I still care about what I think other people are going to think. So therefore, how I shop for pants now is like, okay, realistically, if I wear these pants, what are the chances that I'm going to wear a thong, for example? Or what are the chances that I'm gonna have nude underwear around? Or if it's gonna be slightly see-through? Or it's like, if I buy this, what is the activity? Okay, this is actually spoiling my next point, but the next point is really, what is, the activity associated with this intended piece of clothing. So for example, if you're buying something for, you know, for the sake of, let's just say once again, the example being work and you bike to work, can you bike to work in those pants? Or can you drive, can you do whatever? Or if you're buying something for the bar, are you realistically able to suck in your stomach for the bar or whatever it is, you know? Or being okay with letting everything hang loose. So I think like understanding 
how you are, like your own mentality of whether or not you're okay with something and how you're gonna act and also understanding the activities that you're intending that piece of clothing and like that style to come along with it if you're able to upkeep that. The last tip that I have for you also is about understanding how you feel about unique pieces as part of your style. Is your style something way more timeless or is it something that is more trendy? I feel like this is extremely important to understand your own understanding of trends and if you like for example a lot of print how unique the piece looks because at the end of the day it really affects how you will actually shop for your style as well because if the item looks extremely unique you need to know how you feel about wearing it multiple times and that will affect your shopping decision as well also how many times you're going to wear it and how comfortable you're going to feel wearing it and also I think the most important factor of this is how you feel and if you care about looking back at your photos a few years from now are you someone that's like hey i love that trend oh my god isn't it so funny that i wore this back then or like i love this trend it looks so silly now but it's so funny or are you someone that's just like oh my god like yeah that that really was not a smart purchase that was just a one-time thing what what was i thinking if you're not someone that cares i feel like you know even participating in some trends are really fun but otherwise if you're a more timeless person i think that's also a really good thing to keep in mind as well okay so with that being said those are my tips into finding your style. I hope that this video helps and please leave a comment if you have any more tips or anything else that you found really helped your journey into finding your style and maybe someone can read it and I can pin your comment as well. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!